Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. I want to do some cleanup in the Batania base here. And before I do that, I was realizing that I needed uh, to make some runes and stuff. I needed some living rock. And I've spent so much time making living rock around pure daisies, I realized I should probably just finally automate it. So I've got a single pure daisy here. And I've got two auto placers. And two auto breakers. And I was going to set up using these sensors, a similar setup to my astral sorcery thing, where it detects when the block has changed before it breaks it. But um, I was just realizing that I don't think I actually need that because it transforms so fast. I just did a test and I broke six of these and they all were only broken after they transformed because they just transformed so fast. So it might actually be fine. Alright, so I want this top chest to go into the placers. I guess I'll just connect it. Yeah, I'll connect it all and I'll use different colors for different channels. Okay, so this only inserts on green. That'll insert on green. This thing will always extract on the green channel. And these I only want to extract on the brown channel. And we will insert on the brown channel. Okay. I think that's it, actually. So if I fill this up with marble... Oh. Um, this should be set to round robin. Hmm. Hmm. I guess it's too slow for the round robin to really do anything. Alright, because it needs some speed upgrades. So how is this doing? Yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Full stack, not a single problem. Yeah, no sensors. Don't need to worry about redstone or anything like that. That's kind of a shame, because I was about to get into a mod that I'd never gotten into before, which is Super Circuit Maker. So I'm making a knot gate and screwdriver and mini redstone. Tiny piles of redstone. Oh well, we'll get into that at some point, probably. Okay, well, now that I've got the uh, living stone, I'm going to make a bunch of runes. And I need to make a bunch of spark augments. Because if you remember, this one here has a normal spark and needs a dominant spark. And I need some extra sparks to be able to supply this side with mana. Alright, I've got everything together to make some fire runes, which is when I need to make dominant sparks. And I want to test how fast this thing is, because now I've got not just one, but two uh, mana spreaders. Actually, I guess I had like six or something over there at my main base, didn't I? But they weren't this close to the altar, and they also were normal mana spreaders, not elven. So I've got a feeling it's going to be super fast, and I want to see if it is. And I also want to test something about possibly automating the runic altar to some degree. Alright, let's make it. It is one of that, one of that, one of that, one of that. What was the other thing? Ah, this. One of each. Oh, wow, that's actually not very fast. Huh. Well, anyway. Alright, so here's what I want to test. So after you put all the stuff inside of it, you have to manually use Living Rock and then use your wand on it. And I wonder if there's a way to automate that. Like, I'm pretty sure there is. I know people have automated it before, but I didn't pay attention to how. And I'm wondering if a comparator will output a signal when it's ready for that to happen. So let's test it. Ah! It is outputting a signal. I don't know what that means exactly. I mean, why is it 2 specifically and not like 15? Maybe it doesn't matter? Just if there's any signal at all, that means it's ready to go? Um, let's be sure. So if I put this on it, it doesn't change. Complete it, it does change. One item doesn't change it. Another item doesn't change it.
Okay, so it outputs one, looks like it outputs one when it's making it, and then outputs two when it's ready. Interesting. Hmm. So it definitely is automatable. Alright, I'm packing a bunch of mana lenses of velocity with me. So I'm hoping this is going to solve the problem of the bubbles not getting enough mana. Though, like usual, it's going to be a little bit hard to tell. So what the mana lens does, lenses obviously change the properties of a mana spreader. Um, but they do have some trade-offs. If we look at lens... So velocity, here we go. So the velocity lens will drastically increase the speed at which a mana burst travels, but not only does the beam start to lose its mana a lot faster, it can also carry a bit less. So it's only good if you're going over a significant distance, but not a huge distance. A small distance, and I don't think it's going to matter that much, because it's going to carry a bit less, and it's already not traveling that far, and if it's too far, it's going to start to lose its mana a lot faster. So, let's plop that on there, and let's see, where are you going to lose your mana, huh? Oops, what the... Uh, I think I was in the wrong mode. Well, looks like this isn't too far for it to lose its mana. Okay, yeah, that's a lot faster, huh? That's probably plenty. I'll take a reading there, and I'll come back to that later and see if that goes up or down. But I'm pretty sure that's going to be good. Pulse, 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 pulse. Yeah, <laughs> that's really good. Alright, I'm going to put it on all the others. And... Then I'm going to set up the mana pool over there. Okay, I just saw the mana pool go up, so yes, we are definitely in the positive, so I don't need to worry about the bubbles collapsing. Also, this thing keeps turning off. I don't know why. Maybe if you don't use it for a while, or if you go out of range, it can turn off. I don't know. It's not that big of a deal. I have noticed some strange behavior, like this mana spreader here, for some reason just stopped sending mana pulses. It was still pointing at it just fine. Everything was okay, it just was not sending mana pulses, and it wouldn't until I destroyed it and replaced it. Now that that's dealt with, it's time to get this farm up and going. So I'm gonna change it. I don't want to grow reeds or the rubber stuff anymore because I have so much of it, I don't think it's ever gonna be a problem again. I very, you know, I use a very minimal amount of rubber and I have like a full whatever, however much of it. A thousand here. Like, I just have so much. And I've got a thousand sugar cane here. It's fine. What I really want is the canola seeds, of course. And I also want to get a tree farm up and going. For a reason that uh, I guess you'll see a bit in the future. I mean, wood is always good to have, of course. But I want wood specifically to make a coal for getting my whole rock hounding thing up and going. But we'll get into that in some future episode. Anyway, so I've taken out the card, and I've got a new one that's now an automatic farm instead of a manual farm. No need for a manual, since we don't have rubber wood. It's half crops, half trees. Let's plop that in. I believe... I think if we put that inside of it, it's going to replace... Yeah, so it's going to replace it with dirt. So it's going to make everything all nice and ready to plant. Oh, it's switching the sides of them, too. I guess they're configured to be different sides than they were before. It's making hummus. I think... I think the hummus is for the trees. Yeah, and this must be for the canola seeds. Oh. Oh, that's not what I want, is it? Automatic automatically puts water, but I don't need water because... Uh, I don't need water because of the worms. Which it now sort of got rid of. Then again, is the water that big of a deal? It's not that big of a deal, is it? I don't think this should all be water, though, should it? It's weird, it didn't put dirt in place of it. Did it run out? No. 
So if I put oak saplings in there, I think... Why doesn't it want to take them? Oh, it has to go in here, doesn't it? There we go, so it should plant them. Yep, there we go. Nice. Okay, yeah, I'm fine with this water thing. I'm just going to replace some of this with dirt and see how it responds, because I'm pretty certain that not all of this needs to be water. Oh, whoa. Why did it just suddenly change? Yeah, there we go. Okay, I think that's good now. It's weird, it seems to have chosen different shapes for the water. Will it make a new shape if I cover this up? Yeah. Huh. That seems like that's probably more what it's supposed to be. Yeah, okay, so it's like very, very slightly wasted space because of the unnecessary water, but it's fine. And... This will be replaced with trees. We've already got one tree replaced there, just as soon as it's able to process it all out. It can't extract it. Why? Why isn't it taking it out? i got to figure out the whole system that's going on with extraction. So I'm going to go mess with that, because now we've got these apples to deal with, and wood, and apple oak saplings. So obviously some stuff is not getting routed correctly. Okay, I think I've got it figured out. So I think the reason... Well, there's a bunch of little problems. It is trying to extract everything from the farm hatch. That was working just fine. It just wasn't going in because I didn't have the spots for it. So I added some spots here. This little kind of side piece is going to be all the outputs from that farm. The rest of this being other stuff. Which reminds me... I'll have it be the inputs into the farm as well. Because I think it's going to need a certain amount of dirt to replenish itself with. I think it uses up dirt. And of course... We're also going to need this, the fertilizer. So I'm going to go ahead and plop that over here. So it's kind of just all the stuff we need to manage the farm. And I think the only other problem we're having is that this is getting filled up with canola seeds and only canola seeds. And I think how to fix that is that right here where we're extracting from the system, telling it, telling it to extract all these things, but I haven't set any sort of a limit for it, so it's just packing in as many as it can. So I think if I just set this to keep 64, uh, I think that should be it. Should be fine. Of course, to get that to work, I'm going to have to take these out, so... Oh, got no more space left. Why are the trees not going in there? Okay, I mysteriously got it to work. I tried connecting to the top farm hatch and that didn't work, but for some reason when I move the farm hatch over here and connect it to the side, I don't know which one of those things did it, but it ended up working. I have a vague memory of the side of the farm hatch meaning different things depending on where it is in relation to this... this farm, like, whole structure. As in, like, if it's on the north side, it's used to insert this thing, and if it's on the other side, is used to insert this other thing, and I don't know. It's really hard to find solid information when it comes to this multi-farm thing from forestry. Anyway, it works. That's all that matters. It's working pretty fast, too. Oh, I should probably insert dirt into it, huh? Since I do believe it uses dirt, let's put that here. Take one piece, add it to the filter. So we'll extract dirt. If that worked, should be completely empty of dirt now, and it is. Yep, okay. Yeah, I think it goes through dirt very slowly. I'll have to monitor it, though. Make sure it is actually using up dirt. And if it is, then occasionally refill it. But yeah, working pretty fast. Alright, so now let's get all the mana stuff going. And get a bunch more aggro carnations all around here. Speaking of, I don't... I actually think I might have to make more aggro carnations. I think I used so many of them up 
on the food farm underwater. Okay, I've made 16 floating aggregations. Well, actually I made 15, I had one left over. Now, let's set up a whole bunch more. Mm. So what do I want to focus on? More of the trees or more of the canola? I guess the canola is much more important, huh? What the? <laughs> Let's maybe not connect to that. That's interesting. So XNet will automatically connect to floating batania flowers. All right. Okay. Yeah. Looks pretty good. Um, I got some extra. I guess I'll put them over here. Alright. Now we got tons of flowers, but obviously, like, no mana to supply it. So, forget this. Well, you can chain up to three sparks. You can have a recessive, which is what this is, connect to a normal. And then you can have the normal ones push to a dominant. So I've got dominants here. I think the range on sparks is pretty good, so the most efficient thing is probably to move it as far as possible over here with sparks. Well, I managed to set up three elven mana spreaders on each one in this kind of a configuration. I just kind of threw away the idea of using sparks, because they really did not go as far as I wanted them to go. And these are a little bit inefficient, these ones in particular. The other ones don't have any problems, but these, if you look... They're all going past the point that they should, so they're losing a bit of efficiency. I'm not sure how much efficiency is lost after that point, but I figure the destination isn't that far away from where they start to lose their mana, so it shouldn't be too bad. I do still seem to be in the red, but I think just barely, because if you look at the internal buffer of each of these flowers, most of them are full. So I think it's like just about enough. I might even be slightly in the positive. But if I am, it's going to take a little while to actually find that out. So yeah, it's pretty dang good. I'm sure I'm making everything way faster than I was before. Speaking of, how are we doing? Huh. Not amazing. Really not that amazing, huh? I'm, once again, disappointed in the agrocarnations. <gasps> Whoa! It's a monarch butterfly! Where did you come from? It's the first time I've seen a butterfly around here. Is it because of all the trees? Oh, look at it. It's from forestry. It's gorgeous. Can I... Uh, let me see if I can grab it. Let me see if I can lasso the butterfly. Oh, yeah, I got it. Sweet. Ah, oh, I can't wait to make a... Uh, one of the things I've wanted to make is a... I don't know what it's called. A place that butterflies stay. There's a name for it. How much wood am I making? Oh. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Am I having an issue of filling up. I am! Okay, maybe that's why it's not running that well. I need to put some upgrades of capacity and some void upgrades too. Well, for now, I'll just put void upgrades. I guess I'll put it in all of them. Yeah. Alright, so that should allow a large influx. Are they coming out? Why is the wood not coming out? Why is the wood not really getting extracted? Maybe it's just always preoccupied with this first slot because everything's kind of backed up. I'm gonna hope that's it. There's something I've always wanted to test when it comes to farming. Something I've never gotten a chance to use. 
So there's this thing called the garden. I don't actually know how to pronounce that. Clutch, cloche, cloche, whatever the heck that is. It's from immersive engineering. Now, one little kind of caveat. You're not really intended to have this in this mod pack. Uh, this this thing did not exist in the version of immersive engineering that came with the mod pack. It only came with a newer version that I updated to, which also means the recipe for this thing has not been modified from default. So I'm sure it would be significantly harder than it is now in this expert mod pack. Because as it is, it's pretty dang cheap. It's actually really cheap. It's just glass treated wood planks, an iron mechanical component, which is just a little bit of metal, and a lantern, which is just some glowstone, some glass, and some iron. So chances are, at the least, a lot of that stuff, that's iron, would be replaced with steel, and maybe even more things, because from what I understand, this is a pretty powerful grower. I don't know if it grows stuff super fast or what. I've never used it, I've never even seen it used. But let's try it, just to see how fast it actually is. Because I really do not know. And also, now that I've fixed my problem over here, let's see... Oh, hello, zombie. Got some cool shades. Don't have my sword on me. Eh, yeah, I won't bother putting it on. But yeah, now that I've got this stuff fixed, how's it looking? Eh, it's still not amazing. Because it's not as if right now I'm using up tons of power. If I used up, like, my maximum amount of power, I would definitely run out of this stuff. I can't believe it's so slow. Anyway, so let's try this thing out. <laughs> it's really cool looking. So I know it needs power, obviously. Um, power goes on top. There we go. Oh, it's got a really cool GUI. Oh. Oh. This thing is kind of complicated. So it looks like it takes water. And you can put some sort of fertilizer in it. Is there a special type of fertilizer from immersive engineering or what? Like spike. Like spike. I'm not sure why that says no RF. Because it is full of RF, is it not? Oh, just a display bug. Okay, so let's just try... I wonder if you can put plants in there, by the way. I mean, uh, trees. I doubt it. Probably only crops. Oh, it holds two things at one time. Okay. It's probably not going to grow until it has water, so this must be the output that goes here. Let me grab a bucket of water. Oh, I've already got one on me. Cool. Uh, I guess you have to fill it with a machine. Can't just fill it with a bucket. Oh, god. Okay, got a bunch of stuff to play with. Got a full Ender IO tank of water. I'm guessing it would go here. Push. Yeah, alright, that's good. Fertilizer amount 1, growth modifier 1. So that's just, I guess, default growth speed? Is it actually growing? I'm thinking this might be for fertilizer. So it doesn't take forestry fertilizer. Does it use bone meal? Oh. It uses bone meal's fertilizer? So this is fertilizer amount 1. Okay, so I figured out how it works. It doesn't take two seeds, rather the top one is the seed and the bottom thing is whatever you plant it on. So in this case, it goes on dirt. And it seems to be producing it reasonably fast. Uh, apparently it uses 8 RF per tick, which is like nothing. And you can see roughly every like 5 to 10 seconds it harvests once. Which is pretty good, considering I could pretty easily mass produce these. The only thing I really, really don't understand, however, is this fertilizer thing. So I looked at it on the wiki, and there's 
various numbers of fertilizers it supports, with the highest being some sort of phytogrow thing from Thermal Foundation, which increases the growth modifier to 2. Bone meal is supposed to give it a growth modifier of 1.25, but the thing is, I have bone meal in here and it's not 1.25. This doesn't seem to do anything. Um, what I don't understand is why is this not affecting the growth modifier, and also why is the fertilizer amount going down when it doesn't, like, I never even put any fertilizer in it to begin with. I don't understand. What's going to happen when this goes to zero? Okay, so I see how this fertilizer thing works. It's a little bit odd, but it looks like it has to run through whatever fertilizer it currently has before it can take in whatever's here and switch over to using it. No, it still looks like it won't accept this forestry fertilizer, which is weird because I saw it on the list on the wiki. I don't know what's up with that. But yeah, it looks like if it goes in this slot, it will be able to use it, but it just won't use it until this fertilizer is used up. And I guess when you first make it, it just defaults to having a amount of fertilizer that is one, for whatever reason. Which is odd, but okay. Yeah, okay. So you know what, again, like I said, you're not really designed to have that. That did not exist in this mod pack before I updated Immersive Engineering, and it probably would have its recipe changed. But you know what? I've worked my ass off trying to get sustainable canola seeds going to sustain my power. I've worked really hard. I I mean, look what I did. I made an entire train that goes underneath the ocean from my Batania base under the water to transfer mana over there. And then all this, and even this is like not really enough. I think I deserve a break. So here's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, we're like barely in the positive here and I'm not even using much power. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to convert this entire farm over to trees, because I looked it up. You cannot grow trees inside of the garden cloche thing. Not surprisingly, because obviously it wouldn't fit. So this whole thing is going to be a tree farm. Makes good use of it. And then I'm going to produce a bunch of these garden cliches. Cliches, yes. I'm going to produce many of the garden cliches and just mass produce a bunch of canola seeds and canola using them and along the way i might also make the phyto grow stuff because that is the strongest type of fertilizer you can use in them it gives you a growth of two times is it phyto not bad yeah phyto grow from thermal foundation so how do you make this mm, that's a little um, so you always need niter, you always need slag, and then either pulverized charcoal or sawdust. Huh. Well, the pulverized charcoal will be super easy. Because I can get that from... Like, that can just be a byproduct of my tree farm. After all, I intend to make charcoal anyway. Slag. I don't know if I produce enough of that in niter. Mmm... Oh, is there a trick here? Oh, no, never mind. There used to be a trick where, like with the pulverizer, maybe this is only with old versions of it. I mean, I guess it was practically, oh wait. Nope, looks like that old exploit's still there. Or is it? The old ex sort of exploit thing is, if you want a byproduct, like niter. There were certain objects that you could put through something like a pulverizer where you would get, you see like this has a 25% chance of getting niter. Like you have, a, a, say one in four chance of getting niter and the product you get back here can be like pretty much always used to recreate the thing on the left hand side. So you could just like infinitely run the same inputs kind of through it, occasionally getting the second hand stuff out of it. It was weird. I mean, these kind of do it, because these sandstones, you get two sand out of them, and it takes four to make the sandstone, so you can kind of route it back through itself. Oh, you can just... Oh, you can just straight up make niter from gunpowder. Well, I make tons of gunpowder, so that's easy. Yeah, that's no big deal. Okay. So niter's not an issue, but what about the slag? Thermal foundation slag. 
Yeah, can I, is there any way to make it that's not a byproduct of metal? Pyro concentrator. Doesn't really seem like it. Huh. Interesting. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I think I can. So, two lumium blend and sand gives you lumium ingot and a chance at slag. And I can just turn the lumium ingots back into lumium blend, right? By throwing them through some sort of crusher? Can I not crush him? I don't see any way to crush it. Uh, maybe not. Well, I'll look it up. It looks doable, but it would take a while. We'll see. We'll see whether I actually need to do that. It might be that if I just make like a dozen garden cloches that it's perfectly fine. There we go. So while I'm setting up some stuff for the garden cloches, I just switch this over from bone meal to just each mechanical user simply just tries to harvest everything constantly. And I've got a couple agricarnations going, just two. And just one little mana pool that just has a single mana spreader going to it. Which is more than enough mana for two aggro carnations. So yeah, they certainly don't work particularly fast. But that's perfectly fine, because this isn't for mass production of any sort. This is just to make sure that if I want to go make something, some sort of food, that by the time I want to do that, I'll have a decent store of it. And I'm sure this is fast enough for that, because I don't need that much food. Alright, I got 17 garden cloches made, which makes 18 in total when you count this one. Yeah, it took me quite a while to make it. Because I realized one of the big things that takes a while to make that I was missing for all the garden cloches is treated wood planks. So I went over here and I realized this tank is completely empty because I've been low on coal, so I haven't run any coal through here for a while. And I kind of just totally cleared this thing out at one point and hadn't run any more coal through it for a while. So I got a bunch of blocks of coal going in here, but that takes a long time. It takes like, I don't know, maybe like five minutes for one block of coal to process through. And when it does process, it gives you quite a few buckets worth of creosote, but it just takes a long time. And I also didn't want to make them by hand, the treated wood planks, I was tired of that. So I ran a pipe down here. I Oh, right, I still need to fill this in. Uh, but yeah, I ran a pipe down there and ended up hooking it up to this thing. And put a filter on here for creosote and put a recipe in here so this thing now just mass produces treated wood planks. Much, much more convenient. And I just kind of let, mostly got rid of this whole lava production thing and I totally got rid of the recipe for the obsidian because I think we have enough obsidian for a while and I'm pretty sure there's much better ways to make obsidian, probably using magic or something like that. So I think if I do want to go back to mass producing obsidian, I'll probably do it using magic or something of the sort, rather than using massive amounts of power and my weird recipe that I had to kind of jam in there. Anyway, this has all taken a while, so I think I'm going to end this episode here. I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm going to figure out a place to put my garden cloches. Nice little place somewhere around here. And then I've got to run water to it, all the infrastructure and whatnot. Ooh! Another butterfly. Pretty. It's so pretty. Look at it. I wish I could like pick it up and hold it in my hand or something. Oh, it's a leopard lacewing. I thought it was just another monarch. Anyway, yeah, hope you've enjoyed so far. I'll come back and do the garden cloches, and finally, once and for all, I think I will finally have a very, very self-sufficient canola seed power system. One day. And by one day, I mean next episode. <laughs>